For the first time in more than two years, sales did not fall at Walmart stores in the United States, and the world's biggest retailer also boosted its profit forecast for the year. What's ahead for the retail giant? We're here with one of the most accurate forecasters on Walmart, David Strasser, Managing Director for Equity Research at Jandy Montgomery Scott. He's a Bloomberg best. And uh, David, Walmart's not just any retailer. It really is an indicator of the overall uh, right. consumer economy. So do I read this report as a consumer that's squeaking by, or is this simply Walmart getting better at managing its inventory? Uh, I mean, they'll tell you the consumer squeaking by. They'll talk about, you know, people buying half gallons instead of gallons of milk. I mean, you can use a different examples. You know, the uh, the paycheck cycle is very obvious at the store. People waiting until they have their paycheck before they spend anything. Right, because they're running out of money because of food inflation. I mean, and Walmart is saying they're trying to, they're they're trying to. Uh, absorb some of that food inflation, forcing vendors to absorb some of that food inflation and trying to keep as little of the of the the rest for the consumer to absorb. Um, the other thing, but they did say that um, sequentially May wasn't as, June was better than May and July was better than June. So so that's a pretty good trend. They're still talking about a positive comp store sale by, by the end of the year. Um, you know, we'll see, but it, you know, there's still it's getting a little bit better, but you know, it's still their customer is struggling. Yeah. Well, how much of that do you attribute to uh, gas prices coming down a little bit over the course of the summer? Oh, I think that definitely will help. There's no doubt. I mean, that customer. That's what supported those comps. You know, you take five dollars out of filling your tank, that goes straight into Walmart for their core customer. It goes, you know, that gets spent pretty quickly. Uh, there's been a lot of concern uh, about this trend towards negative sales, flat sales over the past like eight or nine quarters now. So, I mean, do you read this though as a shift of them finally getting a handle on that? I mean, I think they're they're going through a lot a lot in the store. They're they're doing a lot from a strategic standpoint the to change things. Stores, the smaller stores, yeah, the smaller stores, and even inside the stores, they they've they've kind of acknowledged some of the errors of Project Impact from last year, taking SKUs out of the store. They're trying to add them back in. They're talking a lot about that. You know, trying to add back you know products in the store that people wanted that they didn't have anymore. Bringing inventory back into the store as opposed to trying to take so much of it out that the customer couldn't find what they wanted. So they're doing some of these things right. Um, they're fighting once again against their core customer being the one that's hit the hardest in mm -hmm. this economy. Um, you know, and so, it, you know, it, it's it's definitely going to take time. And this is a big shift to turn. So it's taking time. And I saw on the call, um, the note was very clear. Jobs are the number one priority for our customer, period. Yes, so. yes. Their hour and 40 minute call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you spent some time on today, yes. I can imagine. Um, for Home Depot, they were also out, country's right. biggest uh, home goods retailer. The housing market doesn't seem to be any brighter. How did they get so much better in their their earnings? Well, first of all, they're they're executing at such a high level. It's it's, it's a great story. Frank Blake, the CEO, who's come in about I guess about four years ago now, has really made some changes on merchandising. If you go in that store, it's I mean you may not go in a lot. You live in the city, but it's a very exciting store to walk through these days. Um, there's all kinds of merchandising. Says going a retail on there. analyst. Says a retail. <laughs> I have to tell you, I, I walked in these stores like about a month or two ago. I was walking through all these different stores, and I was in that store, and like this is the most exciting store. To be in. So you think the merchandising has improved there? But what you know, one interesting uh, nugget that jumped out in one of the pieces here was that that the size of the transaction has gone up. That mm -hmm. when you get to the register, the customer's paying like three percent more, even though yeah. what they're actually buying is only one percent higher. Well, some of that's a little bit inflation, but also they talked about kitchens being strong. I mean, we haven't heard that in a long time. That's a big ticket item. Appliances, and I think, but once again, the appliances is about merchandising. I think they're just out merchandising some of their competition competition right now Lowe's, in that category. Sears. Lowe's, I mean Sears seems just to be a donor across the board of market share. Um, and Lowe's is Lowe's is you know Lowe's is trying to figure out some stuff. They're, they're gonna they're going through a bit of a transition. A bit so, of a, a, a transition they they they're pricing they're they they tried the thing called pricing optimization. I think they're trying to pull back on that because I think some pricing went up and they lost some perception amongst their consumer. Mm -hmm. So what do you have as your takeaway of the Walmart economy? right now. Well, I mean, the Walmart economy remains very tough. Um, the Home Depot economy, may, you know, which is a little of a higher end economy, and even with the weaker housing, I think what we're seeing with some of these retailers is their business has been hit so hard that the fluff is out of the business. So Home Depot, if things don't get worse, can continue to comp if they continue to execute. 
it, it's mixed out there. I mean, you heard the apparel guys, we heard a lot of things about not being a great August. This is what I wanted school. to get to here because the, the summer isn't all that important unless it just gives us an indication what to expect for back to school. Apparel still not a strong point. No, I mean, it, it does. There's definitely mixed signs out there. Like I said, when Home Depot's talking about stronger numbers and pre sequentially strength, Walmart's talking about some sequential strength, that's positive, but you're hearing other you know, areas where things aren't as good. I mean, you know, even Dick Sporting Goods, another, you know, another retailer reported this morning, comps were a little bit disappointing, although it got better from a tough May. Um, but it seems, that, you know, the companies, the managements, they don't know what to expect right now. There's a lot of, there's a lack of clarity about where we're going in this economy right now. And I think it comes across in the, the variety of comments you hear, conference call after conference call after conference call, that people are trying to take a more ca a cautious to cautiously optimistic approach, but no Which one knows. Which means what? That just means Which people means don't, don't know, know what to say. We don't know. You I don't mean, know. it's, yeah. What is back to school going to look like? I think it's going to be okay. You know, it's always it'll be okay, but I don't think it's going to be great. I mean, you know, tomorrow we'll but hear okay from Target. Okay, is the new great. Flat okay. is the new up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. And I don't know what the new black is, but I mean, it's, it's well, well, we'll we'll get a fashion analyst on for that one, <laughs> David. Um, but thank you for running us through uh, the results.